Welcome to Your Gal Friday, a podcast about female leaders, innovators, and rule breakers. Each week, your hosts, Leah and Phoebe, will shine a spotlight on an amazing gal and talk about what we can all learn from her. Brought to you by Gal's Guide to the Galaxy. Welcome to Your Gal Friday. I'm Dr. Leah Leach. And I'm Phoebe Freer. I still need to get used to that intro, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) I know, right? (laughs) I like it. (laughs) Well, today we are talking about a gal who was the first black supervisor at what would become NASA. We're talking about a gal who taught herself a computer language when only a handful of people even knew it existed. She was a mathematician. She was a teacher and a hidden figure. Today, we're talking about the life and legacy of your gal, Dorothy Vaughn. Yay! I'm really excited this week because we get to learn about a gal whose life was featured in a movie, which, if you've heard our podcast before, you know that we, me and Leah both have uh, filmmaking backgrounds. So, movies is, of course, how we geek out. All day, every day. Very much so. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And that's, of course, how I first heard about Dorothy Vaughn is through the movie Hidden Figures. Um, My parents had just seen the movie, and they absolutely adored it. And as soon as they finished watching it, they just kept telling me over and over and over how good it was. And Mm -hmm. every chance they could get, they were just like, you need to watch it. You need to watch it. And every time I talked to Leah, she's like, you need to watch this. I'm like, okay, guys, I got it. (laughs) I was like, well, they were not wrong, of course. So uh, finally, of course, I watched it and they were not wrong. And this movie is awesome. And I will be my parents and Leah here and tell you, if you've not watched this movie, you need to go watch it because go it watch is that it. good. It's go watch good. it. Yeah, it's really <laughs> fun. Um, it's awesome and I adored every moment and it reminds me of the movie The Help because it's around ish the same time period and it's black women fighting for their freedom which is just so inspiring and encouraging to me and it makes me want to jump up and cheer every single time but anyway that's how i first heard about dorothy vaughn but what about you leah i know you like space yeah. and you like movies and it's like oh so where did you first i know it? i actually i really don't know if i saw an article first Or if I, and the article would have been for an upcoming book, the book Hidden Figures, Um, or if I saw the trailer for the film first, like I really don't know which one, Um, but I can tell you before either one of those, I had no idea that there was a computing group of women at NASA. Like even before when we did the anti-jump cannon episode, I didn't know there was a computer group at Harvard mapping the stars either. So this was new to me. (laughs) So uh, it was one of those things. So once I was aware that there was such a thing, I was immediately drawn into this history. Like I just was a sponge. I wanted to know more. So I read the book first and then I saw the movie and Dorothy Vaughn is my favorite. So I just I might geek out quite a bit. Uh, But I love her. I get this sense that she sets the tone and she sets the foundation for women at NASA and not just black women, but all women. (laughs) Yeah, Totally. And you get that impression from the movie, too, where she's just like, no, I want to be all inclusive. I want to Mm -hmm. like I want to reach out and touch everybody like it's not just about me. Like she was clearly not just out in it for herself she was like no yep if you're taking me you're taking my gals with me exactly and she was kind of like a mom you know what i mean she was right she yeah was totally that really protector you know that the mama bear <laughs> totally <laughs> very much which so we which love. you know i just <laughs> instantly get gravitated towards and i'm like i love this <laughs> totally and um we will definitely talk about this more later oh yes absolutely as we dig into it so let's dig into it Phoebe, where was she born? So, Dorothy Vaughn was born in Kansas City, Missouri on September 20th, 1910, and her birth name was Dorothy Johnson, and her parents were Leonard and Ann Johnson. So, her mother died when she was just two years old, and her father remarried to Susan Peeler Johnson, who raised Dorothy as her own child. 
It is said in the Hidden Figures book by Margot Lee Shetterly that Susie saw how bright Dorothy was and taught her how to read even before she attended school, putting her a full two grades ahead of everybody wow. else. Wow. So even as a child, her gifting was very apparent, and um, she was also musically talented, and Susie enrolled her in piano lessons at a very early age as well. So her family moved to Morgantown, West Virginia, where her father became the first successful black man to own a restaurant. Nice! So Dorothy continued to advance in her schooling, and it completely showed. She graduated from Beakhurst High School at only 14 years old in 1925. That's which amazing. Which is a very young age. That's, that's, yeah, it blows my mind. Yeah. I'm like, I was like not that smart in school. I was like, let me play with chalk and write things. And <laughs> I wouldn't even draw think pictures. of like, having it be not... an option. <laughs> Yeah. Like, you know, if I applied myself, I could graduate at 14. Like, I wouldn't even think. I'm like, I'm just no, here. No, no, no. Until... No, exactly. <laughs> like, wait, what? I could I could graduate early? Like, no, that wasn't a thing. Like, mm-hmm. oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so after she graduated at such a young age, Wilberforce University, a private college for African Americans in Ohio, offered her a full scholarship. Dorothy accepted the scholarship and majored in mathematics. Again, she excelled in her studies. One of her professors during her last two years recommended her for Howard University's new mathematics master's program. However, as she graduated, the Great Depression hit the United States, and everyone, including her parents, struggled to find work. Dorothy chose to stay and get a second degree in education and find a steady job as a teacher. At the time, being a teacher was the most steady job she could hope to find as a black woman. Um, yeah. That was just like her best option at the time. Um, right. She was only 19 at the time, but she still felt the responsibility to help her family and to help her sister go to college as well, just like she had the opportunity. Amazing. So even though Dorothy had a teaching degree, it was still a struggle, even though that was her best option. She started teaching at an all-black school, but after a while, they simply shut their doors. Um, Then she started to work at another school, but eventually the school ran out of money and just simply stopped paying her. Her next job was waitressing at a hotel, where she heard about a teaching position in Farmville. Dorothy moved to Farmville and then started teaching there. While she was there, she met Howard S. Vaughn Jr., and they married in 1932. Together, they had six children, and Dorothy continued to teach while raising her children and helping to support her family. Awesome. Look at that. Well, it would be in 1943 that Dorothy would join the NACA, and that is the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. It would later become NASA. (laughs) But just not yet. So the NACA was a federal agency to study and improve airplanes, and it actually began in 1915. Now, what is interesting about the NACA and NASA is both of them have ties of this fear of war. NACA started a year into World War I. Uh, Now, the U.S. would not join the war for another two years, but it seemed that then President Woodrow Wilson was worried about our eventual involvement, and he wanted our planes to be as top-notch as possible. So now when the U.S. decided to enter World War II in 1942, then-President Franklin Delano Roosevelt issued issued Executive Order 8802 and 9346, which desegregated the defense industry and opened hiring up to black Americans, which is fantastic. That makes me so happy. (laughs) I know, right? And that's why those numbers are important. It's one of those things where it's like, it's an executive order, but no, those were like flipping important at the time. (laughs) And they're still important. (laughs) But then once again, a president in wartime thought it would be our air battles that would make the difference in war. There was also this national pride of everyone doing their part for the war effort so that, of course, the U.S. would win. (laughs) 
Right. So because of this executive order, NACA began hiring. Uh, now, many of our able boys were serving. So it was very crucial to hire women. Now, before Dorothy got into the NACA, there was a section of women computers, and they started about 10 years earlier than Dorothy does. So even though the executive order desegregated hiring and had it open to all, the NACA was on the Langley Air Force Base in Virginia, and Virginia was still segregated. So they created the West Area and began hiring. So one oh, step wow. forward, one step yeah. back, right? <laughs> yep. So Dorothy spotted two hiring notices at the post office in 1943. One was for a laundry job, and it paid more than her teaching job. But she could do that one part time as well as her teaching. The other bulletin was for a mathematician in the aeronautics laboratory. She applied for both of them. She got both of them, but one of them would change her future forever. Which one would that be? (laughs) Oh, I don't know. I can't. I have no idea. (laughs) Dun, dun, dun. So Dorothy was hired as a mathematician, a grade P1, a year later. And she was listed clearly as a temp job only for the duration of the war. But it would turn into a 28-year career. Now, her first job was calculating and rechecking math from any of the NACA divisions. They had actually quite a few divisions all over the map that were doing things and turning them in to have them double-checked. The work was six days a week. It was calculating by hand or by machine. And it was typing up reports on typewriters. Remember these things, typewriters? <laughs> yeah, they're they're Way back. kind of a bear to like try to you know if you make a mistake you need the whiteout. Mm-hmm. But where's the white? But wait, how do you? Yeah, no, please no. <laughs> right, and you're doing mathematical equations on typewriters. <laughs> yeah, that's like my it's worst nightmare. <laughs> Can just. If you want to throw something at me that I will break down and cry if mm-hmm. I have to complete said task, that's probably on the top of the list. There like, you go. Mathematical equations doing math on, on a, a typewriter. typewriter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, pretty sure I'll fail pretty miserably at that. Um, let's let's not. <laughs> right. Exactly. It's not at the top of my favorite things. Right. No. Not, not at the top. No. But I can completely appreciate Dorothy. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Not only that, but they also took crash courses. They learned about engineering, physics, and aerodynamics. And all of that took place after work hours. <laughs> that was that was extra work that they needed to do. Oh, wow. Right. Mm-hmm. So now, Dorothy would actually become besties with two other gals in the earlier days, uh, Miriam Mann and Catherine Petteru. Now, Miriam was small, but she was a feisty gal. She didn't like that there was a cardboard sign in the cafeteria that read colored computers. So she took it upon herself to put the sign in her purse. <laughs> I love it. The sign would sometimes return. Sometimes it would take weeks. Sometimes it would take months. But it would return, and she'd do it again. She'd put it back into her purse, until one day, the sign never came back. (laughs) Yay! I loved it. Now, Marjorie Hanna, she was a white woman, and she was the head of the West Area Computers when Dorothy arrived. Now, Marjorie was very rare. She treated the women as equals, including some of them for get-togethers in her home. She was very rare at the time, and she was sometimes misunderstood by her white male co-workers. But after the time, after the hard work of all of the gals in the West Area computers, attitudes shifted to a common goal that was beyond color lines. And I loved that. That is beautiful. Yes. <laughs> we're all in this together. That's what this is all about, honestly. That's Absolutely. what we're doing right now. Like, that's what this is all about. We're all in this that's together. That's what it's all about. Yes. After the war, Marjorie left the West Area to join the Full Scale Research Division. Her assistant, Blanche Sponsler, also a white woman, moved up. Dorothy was named as Blanche's assistant. Then it got weird. Blanche would get sick and leave Dorothy in command. Blanche would be gone for weeks or months at a time, but would always come back at some point. So this actually happened for years. 
1949, Blanche came back, but it was clear that she was struggling with mental illness, and she was hospitalized and died a few months later. It was very weird. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds very <laughs> weird. It's like Blanche is now the cardboard. Like, it magically comes back once in a while, but then leaves, and then, you know. Right. I guess that was but a weird analogy. But all the like, work in the meantime. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, but she's not getting the credit for it, but it's still Blanche who is like... This is this is a little weird, yeah. It very much so. <laughs> it took six weeks from Blanche's last day for Dorothy Vaughn to be unofficially named the lead of West Computing. It would be two years before it was actually official. An African American woman never held that position previously, and it took her new supervisor, Rufus House, two years to make it to make her the official head in January of 1951. Dorothy Vaughn did the work of the head of the West Computers from 1947 to 1951 without the official title, but she did all of the work again. Once she got the title, she was the NACA's first black supervisor. This was the highest management position any gal could reach at NACA at the time, much less a black gal. So this is right. huge. It was very huge, and it took some doing to get it done. Yeah, yeah, like years of doing. That's and she stuck with it too. That's the thing. Like she, she could have quit. She didn't just quit. Mm-hmm. She could have quit. You, there's so many times where, like, the world is still full of injustice. Right? We're still fighting mm-hmm. for equal rights. We're still fighting for um, people who don't have rights, like the like title of should, the job right? that they do. Yeah. Exactly. Or like enough pay or, you know, anything like that. And so many people just give up or just like, oh, screw it. Like, I'm just going to go and be mad the rest of my life or something. But mm-hmm. it's people like Dorothy that I I really love learning about and looking up to because it's like, OK, I could give up. I could be mad forever. I could just right. like wallow in the negatives or, or you I can persist. stick to my guns. Yeah, you mm-hmm. can persist. You can stick to your guns. Mm-hmm. You can prove yourself. And it could take years, yes. But it will happen. You know, you just... Yeah. It, it's very hopeful to to hear about these types of stories. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I find a lot of character in that. I really do. So during Dorothy's tenure as supervisor, she worked tirelessly to support and promote both black and white women within the liber- laboratory. She worked closely with respected white mathematicians on many different projects. Dorothy was a steadfast advocate for the women of West Computing, and even intervened on behalf of white computers in other groups who deserved promotion or pay raises. So she was not only looking out for herself and for gals like mm-hmm. her, but she was looking for all, out for all gals, which, which I is love. fantastic. Yeah. 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 Well, she was beautiful. very yeah. observant about her surroundings. She deciphered what needed done and saw the capabilities in the woman around her who were able to do the work. Because of how good she was at this, engineers valued her recommendations as to the best girls for a particular project. And for challenging assignments, they often requested that she personally ha- handled the work. Right, because she gets it done. And she gets it done. My gals can do it. We can do the work. I'm like, oh, she knows. She just knows. <laughs> she does. She really, really does. So now we're going to change gears just ever so slightly, because uh, mm-hmm. it is important to mention that when Russia launched Sputnik 1 in 1957, Everything changed. Everything in Dorothy's life, everything in the country changed. So NACA was trying to do Mm -hmm. the same thing. We were trying to also launch (laughs) a satellite up into space, but we were failing. We really, we really were, unfortunately. So once again, the U.S. president, this time Eisenhower, he was really worried about Russians' military capabilities because actually in the movie Hidden Figures, they sum it up very nicely. If they can launch a rocket in space, bombs will follow. So that was the really, really big worry in the entire country. So nine months after Sputnik, NASA was created, and their mission was to have the U.S. be the leader in the space age. (laughs) They were not going to lose this. (laughs) Definitely. For many, many reasons. 
So the NACA changed from a military operation to a civilian one, and slowly the segregation ended. So just like that cardboard sign that Miriam Mann would take one day at lunch, (laughs) one day the colored sections were labeled, and then one day they weren't. So soon there would be no West Area computers. Now, computers started actually arriving in the way that we kind of know them today, uh, in the form of an IBM. And first, what arrived was the 704. It was known as an electronic calculator. <laughs> it was a, a giant gigantic, device. A gigantic, but that's all it did. <laughs> uh, electronic calculator. Um, like that's it, right? Like as big as a room. <laughs> Okay. Well, now I have then it the on next my one phone. arrived that was the size of a room. Now the big dog, the big dog could do a little bit more. Well, actually, it could do a lot more, but it was still a giant calculator. But the big dog <laughs> was the seven ninety. That's the one that's seen in the movie. Uh, the seven oh four was its little baby brother. <laughs> oh, I got gotcha. you. It was. They were still quite massive. I mean, none of them were pocket size. Let me put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dorothy noticed with these new physical computers, there would be less need for human computers, specifically women computers, regardless of color. So women like Katherine Johnson and Mary Jackson, who are we are going to talk about in upcoming episodes, they did transfer into other departments within NASA. Now, the computer pool, though, it was still deep with talent. And the more talent you had, I mean, the less likely you stayed in the computer pool, but Still, many women were at work, ready to work, and the IBM was starting to kind of take their jobs away. So maybe for job security, or maybe it was a chance to move up within NASA and kind of move forward with NASA, Dorothy decided to teach herself the computer language of Fortran. Now, because these supercomputers can do great things, few people knew how to get it working and how to keep it working. So she not only learned it, but she literally helped write the handbook detailing the equation methods used by the computers. So if it wow. broke, people would know how to fix it. <laughs> now that's how you get it done. Right, exactly. She kind of translated between this is what the computer is trying to do that human beings do. So I'm going to translate it right. for you. <laughs> Now, what I love about this part of Dorothy's story is that she saw an opportunity for upward movement for the women computers, black and white. And in 1961, Dorothy officially moved up to the Analysis and Computation Division, known as the ACD. And that was men and women, black and white, working together as computer programmers. And I think that is just absolutely fantastic fantastic it makes me so excited oh absolutely (laughs) so what was dorothy's life like away from nasa well in 1971 dorothy vaughn retired from nasa she she pursued her interests outside of mathematics like joining the phyllis wheatley young women's church organizations group the silver bells okay so i just want to say you know, this whole modern thing of shortening thing, of shortening names or making an acronym right. out of everything. I never noticed the importance of it until we started doing this podcast because I'm like, right. okay, tried to get it all in one breath. <laughs> you did excellent, though, getting that in one breath. Oh, it is a mouthful, you. but you got it. <laughs> it was a mouthful. <laughs> it's like, oh, yes. well, shortening names is good, but okay, cool. It can like be it. done. But at the same time, yeah, abbreviations are great. <laughs> yeah, they really are. But we know what she was involved in now. Nice. She was also a member of the Carvel Memorial Presbyterian Church in Newport News, Virginia, for more than 50 years. She served the church in several leadership roles, including, not surprisingly, its finance chair. Yeah, trust this girl with math, always. (laughs) Oh, totally, totally. So not only was she active at NASA and the NACA and, like, overworking herself essentially raising kids had a husband she was overly active in her church like yeah oh my gosh where did she have time to sleep (laughs) Mm -hmm. she had lots of energy and she put it to good use look at that she did (laughs) the reverend dr brian blout former pastor of the carvel memorial church called dorothy a true space heroine but one of the people you rarely hear about He spoke of her humility, saying that he had been the pastor at Carvel Memorial for three years before he ever heard about her early work at NASA. 
He wow. said, quote, she's been a wonderful Presbyterian, and she served in all kinds of capacities at the church when I was there. She participated in music and singing, which brought her right back to her roots and um, where her her stepmother was teaching her how to play music and, and right. sing. Right. And- Right back there, and she also worked on missionary activities in the church. Funny enough, she also wrote a song called Math Math, which I kind of tried to look for, and I couldn't find. I tried so to I'm find hoping... it. I couldn't find it either. Yeah, I looked Sad really hard. Face. Yeah. Ah. Uh, so at least we know she wrote a song. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> she does. And if any of our listeners have ever found it or find it in the future, oh, yes. please, please send it our way. We would it. love to hear the song. Please. We just we couldn't find it. Mm-mm. Yeah, couldn't <laughs> find it. Oh, man. I would love to hear it, though. That would be so great. Yeah, absolutely. That would make our week. <laughs> it really, really would. It was mentioned in her uh, obituary. And many sites will even say, and she wrote a song called math math but there's no right. like you know there's no links to it and just putting in math math dorothy vaughn you're gonna get her biography yeah, well, which yeah, mentions she like, writes yeah, the song she, and it's like or it's like yes you loop dorothy back vaughn did again. math like all, all i kept right. getting was yes dorothy vaughn did math math for right and i'm like i'm aware uh, NASA. I want her song. i'm like yes i know that i just want the song <laughs> like yes i, I know think it would a, be she's a computer <laughs> I know. Can you imagine that song being in elementary schools now? You know what I mean? Like, I know. So it's one of those things. So like, cool. if we can find this song, anybody, bring we it back. Totally I think po- yes. kids today need it. We would actually it. put it mm-hmm. in elementary schools. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yep. Oh, my gosh. That would be so cool. <laughs> It'd be perfect. <laughs> it, it's so inspiring to me that not only was Dorothy a superhuman computer, she was also humble, raised her kids, mm-hmm. stuck up for other people, and stayed true to what she believed in. Like, that is yeah. a truly inspiring person to look up to. She and really that's why is. I love that we do this show. Yeah, because it, it, it connects us with just wonderful people to learn from and to kind of really live with does. for a little bit. And I do yeah. love that. Um so another thing that uh, NASA biographies uh, brings up quite a lot is mm-hmm. they mentioned she also worked on the Scout Launch Vehicle Program. Um, so I, I wanted to cover it because I think, in fairness, not a lot of places actually cover it. They also say she also did this. Um, now, I couldn't find out what year specifically Dorothy worked on Scout or what her role was. However... I can tell you what Scout is, because I thought it was quite interesting. So Scout started in 1959 at Langley, and its purpose was to launch satellites into orbit. Now, Scout stands for Solid Controlled Orbital Utility Test. And there have been 118 Scout launches with a 96% success rate. That's crazy rare and just wonderful. So this program was a true collaboration between governments and contractors around the world. It was everywhere. So it really was a source of pride. And at one point, it was called the Nation's Workhorse by NASA. So this little program, it stayed at Langley until 1991 when it transferred to the Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland. And so that is what the Scout Launch Vehicle Program is. (laughs) Oh, that's so awesome. So like we were talking about earlier, Dorothy Vaughn did retire from NASA in 1970. Um, she was 60 at the time when I hear that she was only 60 when she retired it was like she had so much spunk and energy like why'd she retire so early well she actually did look for but never received another management position at Langley so she like Uh, fought for it but she just like she's like okay it's time for retirement now well, yeah. But her legacy... Plus, yeah, she could have been exhausted as well, I would just assume. Oh, but then gosh. again, it's Dorothy. Maybe... I don't think she ever was exhausted. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> so her legacy does live on, though, in the successful careers of notable West Computing alumni. And there's so many people that, like... like I was going to list them because all these websites do, and I'm like, there's just so many names. Mm-hmm. There's just... There's they, amazing they all names. Study all of her. them. Learn all of yeah. Yeah. We just picked uh, the three hidden figures, but there are so many more to learn about, oh, and yeah. they all have inspiring stories. They really, really do. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, but then we get to the sad part. Oh, no. Yeah. So Dorothy lived to be 98 years old, which is a very long and wonderful life. She died yeah. of natural causes on November 10th, 2008. She had six children. She had 10 grandchildren and she had 14 great grandchildren. Oh, I wow. thought that was fantastic. <laughs> she she lived a long life. Oh, it's so cool. Yeah. So the part we we love to do and we do oh, on every yeah. episode. So what yeah. legacy do you think she wanted to leave behind? I love this question. Um, I think Dorothy had big plans. Like she always comes off as like a big picture thinker. So yeah, I, totally. It, I, and I think that she was she was always looking out for other people. She was always looking out like mm -hmm. it wasn't just she was looking out for her own legacy. She was looking out for everybody around her. Like, I think she saw the importance of the NASA, NACA and NASA. And mm -hmm. she wanted to leave behind a legacy of we're women. Yes. Yes, we're black women. We can still we can do the work. This is why. Mm -hmm. we were born to do like this is right. this is our job this is we're computers period like this is this is who we are we're this we're, is what we're good at we can use exactly. these talents for right. really so really greater good right exactly so i think her legacy was she wa she wanted to leave behind something that people can be inspired to follow and to um, grow from her so that she yeah. she can propel herself and therefore propel other people. And she, I think, she just wanted to keep it going. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. What I'm I'm you? right there with you. Yeah. It, to me, there's the line in the movie, and Dorothy's character mm -hmm. said it, and maybe the real life Dorothy said it. Who knows? <laughs> right. You never know with movies. But regardless, I feel like the spirit is so much there when I kind of think of Dorothy's legacy. Um, she says, any upward movement is movement for us all. And I oh, really yes. feel that Dorothy is a brilliant role model for hard work and forward momentum. She's that gal who's going places and she's taken everybody with her. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I love that. So, I mean, that line in the movie, it could relate to black women, to women in general, you know, in the workplace in innovation, in winning the space race, and in life in general. So yeah. I think she wanted to leave the world a little better and kind of move that colored line as far forward as she could, because in my mind, I think she did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and absolutely. I love her for it. Yeah. I love the way you put that. That was so great. I, oh, I thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so what did you learn from Dorothy? I mean, that you can put into words. I mean, I, I know totally. I'm going to struggle with it. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, I love these questions. I love like just pondering with these questions because. Right. Exactly. Because it's, it's not just it's history. Like you it's bring not. it to life when you think about these things, you know what I mean? You because do. Like, when you think about the yeah. legacy, when you think about lessons, then this person of history that could be just in a book, it stays with you. And it's quite fun. It does. It is. Um, and I encourage the listeners to answer these questions with us. Like our Absolutely. answers do not have to be universal answers. These are just our personal answers. Right. So we're just giving I, you a starting part. <laughs> exactly. Like, please, please think of something like, if you have other ideas, let us know, honestly. Like, yeah. this, is, this is an open-ended question, and it's just another way for us to live with them. I think I learned from Dorothy that um, it's okay to propel yourself forward, keeping other people in mind. Um, mm -hmm. So often in society now, you're like, people are so worried about oh, don't let somebody ride your coattails or don't let so-and-so right. take advantage of you or don't let so-and-so follow you into success and then take your success as their own. Like, I feel like that's such mm -hmm. a big worry right now, but it's like, okay, you can worry about that, I guess, because our world is messed up. But at the same time, Dorothy had this courage to not be afraid of that and actually mm -hmm. insist you're coming with me. Like, I'm Absolutely. not going by myself. Yeah. I'm taking these gals with me, and I'm taking all of them, not just my favorite ones, not just my friends. Mm -hmm. I am taking 
all of them because they all deserve to move forward. They're all they can all do the work. They're all working hard. Like I, yeah. she wanted to propel herself and as many people as she could forward with her. Um, and I think I think that's what the biggest thing I learned from her is just like it's okay to take a risk to bring people mm-hmm. with you. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And it's remarkable. Uh, I mean, of all the the gals in Margot Lee Shatterley's book, I, I really related to Dorothy. Dorothy kind of starts off the book. Um, we're introduced to her first, and then we're you know slowly introduced to the other gals that were around her. Um, right. Because I, uh, obviously there was way more than three. You kind of get a little bit barraged by the names that are in there. And there's a couple of Dorothys. Right. So sometimes I get confused. <laughs> right. <laughs> Understandably. But there are many, right, exactly. But there are many hidden figures in the NACA and in NASA throughout the years, and they are all talented and they're all complex. And it was just the best minds in one place at one time. And it's right. fascinating. But they're still human beings. And that's right. why their stories are so important. Um, but Dorothy, she's a mom and she's a supervisor. Yeah. But she's also a rainmaker. Um, She's not one that got the title of engineer. Uh, She didn't get her name on any reports. But she got the gals to that room to do that, to make those first, you know, monumental things. She found opportunities for herself and she found opportunities for the gals in her command. And I just love it. That's a rainmaker to me as somebody who makes things happen. Absolutely. (laughs) And not just for one, but for all. Yeah. So here's what I kind of relate to in my past life of filmmaking. Um, I learned that you figure out what you're not good at and you hire the best people in that field to do that thing. And Absolutely. then you learn from that, <laughs> right? Definitely. So, That's exactly what you do. Yeah. Yes. So you probably will never be as good as the person that you hire at the thing that you kind of fail at. But right. you get more knowledge. You get more awareness. And you definitely get more appreciation. And your project's going to be 10 times better. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. So you find those brilliant minds. And so everyone has talent, but there is a certain person um, who can not only find talent, but find the opportunity for that talent to really shine. And I think that's what I really learned from Dorothy. It was her way of opening the doors when there were no doors. Um, I mean, we honestly, I think we need to learn more about people like Dorothy because I think life is a collaboration and we're all in it together. And the more we can learn of how to work together, the better we'll be. (laughs) I agree completely. Yay! Yay. Do you have any (laughs) final thoughts on Miss Dorothy Vaughn? I mostly just want to mention again that we're doing like a series, a story arc in season two mm-hmm. of Your Gal Friday. So we love Dorothy. We live with Dorothy all week. But next week we get to um, learn about another gal from Hidden Figures. So we're doing yes. um, all we're doing the three main gals from Hidden Fi- the Hidden Figures movie, and mm-hmm. um, I'm just wanted to accentuate that fact that we are right. going to stick with Stay this tuned. topic for the next yeah for the next two episodes and then we're going to do a little recap and then we're going to do another story arc so you guys yes. can just live with us and stay in this uh type of mindset for a few weeks with us or for a month or so and we can all um learn together about the same mm-hmm. type of thing which is really cool. Right. Kind and of stay you, in the space race for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And if you haven't watched the movie yet, you still got time. We didn't spoil the movie. Like, right. Exactly. We're not going yes. to spoil like, <laughs> I mean, you, you got the idea of it, but like, it's still worth the watch. Like, it's still worth watching. It's an experience movie. It yeah. Is. I mean, it that's really the best is. way that I can describe it is you can know the history, but the movie is an experience. Definitely. So it's worth it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Yes. Oh, I 
love it. Yay. Well, that wraps it up for us. So yes, next week we are continuing the real life gals of hidden figures with Katherine Johnson. She is the next one in our lineup. Yay. So gals guide is also continuing black history month. We are doing articles, videos, and podcasts dedicated to our fantastic sisters of the past and present. So check all of them out at galsguide.org. So we leave you with this quote from Dorothy Vaughn. I changed what I could and what I couldn't, I endured. For more information about this week's gal or to check out our previous episodes, visit galsguide.org. To support the show, visit the Gals Guide Patreon page. We love our patrons and offer exclusive perks and behind the scenes access for as little as $1 a month. Thank you so much for subscribing to Your Gal Friday.